Adam's been telling us about some of his kind of bizarre Twitter experiences. Very positive reaction to you today, Paul. Uh, Dave McGinley tweets to say, as much as it hurts me to say it as a dub, Paul ran the show last night. Great to see how much the match meant to him, as he explained to us earlier on, just trying to get a, a, a good year off to a good start, which you've managed to do. There's lots more along those lines, but a question here via text by Mark and our firm. If Paul could compare Kerry to a Premier League football team or a European football team, who would it be? Well, I'd say United because I'm a United fan. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I suppose um, there'd be similarities in terms of the, the, the kind of the, um, the way we play the game, I suppose. Kerry would be like, as we found out our cost last year, we'd be quite cavalier, I think. Maybe not so much this year, but certainly last year we were very cavalier, you know. And I think, you know, the, the Dubs beating us, you know, I think the, 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 the Dubs deserved their win. They, they, they're, they're, they stuck at it and they won a couple of games that year the same way in the last minute and that, but we had been conceding a bit too much in the course of the year than we would have liked, you know. And, uh, How did that compare to many, many times have you lost all of them finals? Last three of them. Three of them. Okay. Yeah. How, how, how did the last years compare? Yeah, it's funny. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. I, I just tried to divorce myself completely from last year, you know, because like all five really, really affected me, and it can, it can affect you in funny ways. as last can, and and all five really affected me. All eight was bad. Oh, what ways? What ways? Funny ways? What ways? Well, in all five, I remember. I, I just, I didn't want to go out. I wasn't meeting my talking to my friends. I wasn't really talking at all. I, I felt. It can affect your sense of self confidence and your self your self esteem and that kind of thing, you know. Because but with all five, I, I, I couldn't see us being beaten, you know. I just so it came as a big shock. I just couldn't see us being beaten. But that was a great Tyrone team, you know. The best team I've certainly faced was that that Tyrone team were brilliant, really, really competitive, tough, could play anyway. Mm. You know, if you wanted to go toe to toe, they'd go toe to toe. But they had all the skills. Some of the best players that played the game, you know, brilliant side. Um, 08 was a bit of a non-event for me, so I didn't know how to feel about it. I felt I'd left everybody down. And then last year I felt I didn't really contribute, so I just kind of divorced myself from it and said, look, that's, it was hard to rationalise last year, I felt. Just on the theme of trying to straddle almost two different worlds that we were talking about before the break, there's a book, This Sporting Life, which was made into a movie. I think David Story is the name of the author. And he based the story on his own experience, which was he was a rugby league player. Uh, not, not at the highest level, but a decent rugby league player in Halifax or wherever he was from. But he also he went to art college in London. And he said the rugby league guys saw him as this softy who went to art college. And the art college guys saw him as this uncouth animal yeah. who played rugby league. Would you identify with that? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably not. I'm doing, I'm doing his writing, you know what I mean? I'm <laughs> writing because writing I love writing. I, I, do really enjoy, I, do, I do really enjoy writing, you know? I find it. Um, oh, it's sports writing. Yeah, I will. I will. I will when I'm finished playing. Paul, I would like to when I'm finished playing. You know, but at the minute, I just feel it would be a kind of a conflict of interest, even though it might cause a little less. Uh, it might cause a little less <laughs> happy. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, look, you know, I, I think I think people really take it too seriously. I think Ireland has become a very serious place now. Anyway, you know? yeah. I think we're a bit angry. But do you find Paul, um, that um, when you are a public figure through sport, as you are, that's you look at some things that are said about you or written about you and you almost feel you're caricatured in, in the media because you're, you're, you're described as some whites or, or yeah. incense define you yeah. and because the public don't have any other access to open that window into your life they, they then define you that way Absolutely. so that must be a certain order of frustration it, it is frustrating it is frustrating <coughs> you, feel like, you feel like that you know this isn't, this isn't me this isn't me come on you know, look, look beyond look beyond a little bit now and look and, uh, but then again you see it can be useful in some ways you know, the difference, the, the gap between perception and reality, in between, it can work for you in some ways. It can work you. How does it work for you? Well, I mean, I'm doing well in my life. And people are looking at me and I think are wondering what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm doing very well and I'm, I'm happy, you know. And in a sporting sense, then, you can get pigeonholed as a certain type of a player. And opponents might look at you as being good at certain things, yet you, you're doing other things very well. Mm. And, and you know, you were having a different influence on the game, whereas people, because media might have seen you or, or supporters might see you as being a certain type of player, they look for you doing these things, whereas you're doing lots of other things that they don't see. Right, yeah. You know. What is it that's making you happy at the moment? Just my life. I'm, I'm always happy. I'm, you know what I mean? I think I'm, I'm, I'm always a happy guy. But you have told us there that, you know, when you have a bad defeat, you can take it quite badly and you can withdraw. So yeah, so that was a bit when I was younger, it was a bit like that. So you have, you've kind of gotten that out of your system. Yeah, 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 you can't. You just can't. I, I do think that for sports, for sports people, when you, when you have a major loss on the field or in an event, there's a, there's a bit of a grieving process you go through. 
mm. you know and it's, it sounds dramatic but you actually a few days you just absolutely go through the process of, of, of going through in your mind how, how and why this happened and if you don't you're not going to kick on from it is that absolutely. selfish though should you not be no it's part of I mean I remember um, for the time that in my mind it jumps out is losing to France in the last minute in Crow Park in the first game of Crow Park last minute again Grand Slam gone with two minutes to go then we had to go and play England two weeks later, which was a pretty important game. Mm. And I remember Shane Horgan talking about it after that, that we, we, we had that two weeks in which to get over that loss and start to build towards England. And there was a grieving process almost in the players who had to get over their heads, well, how we lost to France and why we lost to France. And you, you, it's part of playing sport. You get up the morning after a loss and you're not going to feel as good as if you won. And there is a little bit of a feeling down about it. But then you rationalise it and you kick on. Absolutely. Um, I remember back in 2005 that Tyrone defeat we had a really good we had a really good side in 05 you know but the Tyrone team proved themselves a great team you know uh, but I can remember afterwards for the Tyrone goal I got I ended up full back I know I always say when I went into the finals like you have to expect the unexpected like any game I've played especially finals anything can happen but I ended up back full back under a high ball like somehow I don't know how the boys went up the field attacking and we got caught in a break and but one of the lads came up to me in the, the, the lounge after. Mike Mack came up to me afterwards. Like, and you talk about how players can take the field personally. Like, a couple of our backs had gone and sadly up the field. The ball came back down and they were absent. But like Mike Mack came up to me afterwards, couldn't look at me. You know, I was head down. He goes, man, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, because mm -hmm. he, he had probably gone. Or a couple of them had gone. He was one of them. And, you know, just really, and he was hurting. You could see, like, he couldn't even look at me. But you know, I, I'd be like that a little bit. I'd find it hard at times, you know. Uh, it's the relationship, it's, it's how it affects your relationship with your, t with your teammates is how I, I find hardest. I think that, especially with Gooch last year, you know, I found that really difficult. Like, Gooch, uh, after everything he had done for Kerry and, you know, one of the, one the, maybe the greatest player of all time, like, that he deserved, you know, we should really have given him that opportunity. But, you know, that, that's, you know, it's not as never as dramatic as that, like, you know. Do you enjoy I mean? the victories as much? Do you know, I, I don't tend to. I don't tend to. I enjoy them, but it's, it tends to be more passing than victory, you know. Um, you just tend to say, right, I do anyway. But so you know, I of course, you enjoy them. Sometimes you, yeah, absolutely. getting a result that you build up the pressure on you, it's almost a sense of, whoa, I'm glad we got that. You, you have it. That's, yeah. it. that's exactly it. You just go, like last night now, I mean, for the first time in a while, now I was, you know, sometimes before games, you're kind of you're kind of just going, oh, why do, why do I do this to myself? <laughs> why am I doing this? You know? this yeah, 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 and that wasn't a huge game last night. I think, but before finals, especially, like sometimes you'd say, "Oh my God, why, I don't need this anymore." You know? But then afterwards, it's over, and you're just it's just relief. You don't care. You just want to go and uh, relax. You know? Yeah. So you crack this up, Paul. We're going to take a break after which we'll kick into our media review, which is going to be dominated by the Super Bowl. So we will be heading over to Indianapolis to check in with Terence Moore, who'll be standing by.